everyone. Uh, I'm here with Art Kemp, who is a tail gunner and World War II veteran in the B-17. And we're going to learn about his story and his experiences. And he's got some things to show us right now. I, I got a original book here. It's a little Coca-Cola book. Oh. And uh, right here, as soon as I get it out. <laughs> yeah. Right here is where I kept all, track of all my missions when I, this, I, this is the book I used. It oh says, my goodness. It says the Coca-Cola down here. I see that. And uh, they give me this, I'll show you the date I got it. October the, the 14th, 1943. <laughs> yep. So, and these here are Q signals. Oh. I don't really ever heard of Q signals. See, when you're flying an airplane, you don't talk like we do. You, you use Q signals. Oh, okay. And, and, uh, so you use this in here, I can't uh, QFM or mm -hmm. fly at so many feet. Sure. The, sure. And, here, we'll uh, the, show the camera here. Or you can show them. Yeah. So here's, we can see, folks. Here's his. Uh, his book here, and then he's talking about those cue signals, if you can see it there. Yeah. And I'll see if I got anything else. I got a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. We appreciate you sharing it with us. Back, back in the old days, you didn't have ballpoint point. You had to your fountain, fountain pen. pen. That's what happened here. It, yep, it ran all <laughs> over on you, didn't it? <laughs> and let's see. I, I, I see that. This, this, book can, this book's only about 75 years old. Only a few, you know. <laughs> There's a lot of very important things in there in that 75-year-old book. Uh, there's a way of, a transmission when you can get there. That's the way they look when you, mm -hmm. all the cue signals in there and everything. Oh, yeah. That, I used to be able to read all that stuff, but I can't do it no more. Yeah, well, you know, use it or lose it, right? That's what they say. <laughs> I've lost it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we all have in some way or another. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to, there's, there's the start of my missions right there. Oh, my goodness. Yep. And there was. Uh, look at that. Uh, my first mission was on June the 21st, 1944. Mm -hmm. Eight hours and 50 minutes. Wow. And I got Berlin, Germany, of course, and heavy flak. Sure. We did a lot of flak there. Our altitude was 28,000 feet. Up there. And the pilot, Lieutenant Deal. That was, Lieutenant Deal was my original pilot I trained with in Avon Park, Florida. And oh, so, very so good. We'll talk about him in just a minute. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about him. Uh, Second mission was Rouen, France, and that was on June the 20th, 22nd, 1940. That, that was only four hours and 30 minutes. Half, half the time, yeah. almost, yep. Altitude 25,000. Got four holes oh, in the airplane. Oh, <laughs> wow. Target was a, oh, I forgot to tell you up here, the, the headquarters buildings was in this, this, they called it the Gestapo. Did you ever hear that? I have heard that. that. Was the yep. Gestapo headquarters. Wow. That's what we bombed. That was your first mission. Yeah, first mission. Yep. And this here second mission was an oil field. And the third mission was June the 24th, 1944, Crepe, France. I don't know why I'm pronouncing these right or not. <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce them either. It sounds good to me, Art. <laughs> A little plaque that was accurate, altitude 25,400 feet. Pilot got hit in his right leg with plaque. Wow. Plane tore up. Yep. Target flying bomb. The flying bomb is the same was them B, B1 bombs that oh. we used to send over. That's mm -hmm. what we, we would bomb them for a secondary target. Oh, yeah. So then and the Lieutenant Deal got hit with flak. On his leg, it went right into his, right into his, uh, of course, he was sitting there flying the airplane, mm -hmm. and uh, it hit right above his ankle. Oh, and wow. It went through his leg like this, and Holy came out of his moly. kneecap. Came out of his and so kneecap. it came upwards. Yeah, it came yeah. Up, yeah. Oh, wow. That was yeah. a painful injury. And he, that was a, we only, that was the third mission. That's the only mission. There's, we only threw, flew three missions with the original pilot. Yeah. 
So, so what were you thinking? What was going through your mind when, you know, all of this was happening? Well, actually, we didn't know what was happening when we were flying, mm -hmm. but we did find out after we landed. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. Wow. Then I remember he, he would pass out on kind of a lot of blood. He lost a lot of, course, of blood. Of course, yeah. And, and uh, our co-pilot, he had never landed a plane in combat or in a combat situation. And uh, so Dio knew that. Dio knew that. So he, he when we got, he, the co-pilot got us on final at our base. And of course the plane was all tore up. And all us guys had to get in the radio room and get ready for a crash landing. Right, so, right. Uh, My goodness. Because all the cables and a lot of the cable control cables was all they just shot down hanging down exactly they were there severed wasn't, wasn't no rudder no mm -hmm. elevator they had mm -hmm. to use the throttles to wow and uh, and so but anyway the pilot he came to just enough to put to put the plane on the ground and he passed out again right how about away. what a guy how about that and i can remember they taxied the plane up not, not on a regular blacktop, but just up by the big hangar. Mm -hmm. and of course, the ambulance was there and everything. They're waiting. Yep. And they went in there and they gave him seven blood transfusions before they ever took him out of the airplane. Oh my word! Yeah. He was just about out of yeah. it, wasn't he? Yeah, he wow! Was. And, wow! And I never. And one thing that I never will forget. One of the medics come comes to the waste door. Uh, he'd been up taking care of him, and he comes to the waste door and opened that up. Emptied a whole boot of blood out. I, that bet. about made me sick. I'm sure. That, yep, that's <laughs> I, a lot of blood. Remember, that, that's my third mission. Wow. So, so then on my fourth mission, June the 28th, 44, we had four days off there. Leon, France, I mm -hmm. think, little flak. It was five hours and so six minutes, 25,800 feet. And it had, had an airfield, and I called it a milk, milk run. Okay. <laughs> and tell us, what is a milk run? Okay, you, you want to know that. I do. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell us what a milk run is. What's that mean? A, a milk run is a real easy mission. No flak. See, I, I got down here. Uh, let's see. No, no flak holes. Mm -hmm. no, no flak holes. Yeah. So, so milk run, usually, not, not usually too much action. About every mission, you, you got holes from flak. You sure. Clean, you're lucky if you, if you don't get it. If hit. you didn't, exactly. So right. milk run is really an easy, easy mission and not too long one. Yep, relatively so, speaking, yep. So yeah. Everybody always wanted a milk run. They absolutely, <laughs> praying for milk runs. Well, Art, we really appreciate you sharing that info with us. This is a, a great introduction just to some of the 35 missions that you served during your time. Um, so I guess quickly, let's just um, tell everyone a little bit about your biography and, and who you are in, in your life. Um, so you were born in Port Jefferson, Ohio right. on February 9th of 1924. Right. You were drafted yes. into the United States Army in February of 1943. I, I, I have to correct you there. Okay, yeah, please not do. Not the U.S. Army, it was U.S. Army Air Force. The Army Air Force. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. And that was by the draft board in Sydney, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And then they swore you in in Columbus. Mm -hmm. At Fort Hayes, Columbus. Absolutely. Fort Hayes. And then you received your basic military training down in Clearwater, Florida. Right. But they only gave you three weeks of training instead of the normal uh, three six weeks, weeks of training and we stayed in them. In a, in a, in a motel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they, I don't think they called them motels. And it, and it was on a golf course, and it was it was, it was like a, uh, well, it was a, it was a motel, I guess. It was three stories high, and mm -hmm. it was all wooden structure. The only thing wrong there, they'd get you up in the middle of the night for, for a fire drill. Oh, so yeah. The, it was. You look back over, it was all wooden. You know, right. you could have caught on fire. Just like that. Yeah, Gone up right. like a match. So, yep. So we didn't like that too well. No. <laughs> <laughs> Always listening for that alarm, I yeah. bet. But we, on, on our training there, I, all we did, we, we didn't hardly march any, and we didn't handle, didn't handle guns or anything like mm -hmm. that. And we just went out and sat on the greens on the, on the, on the golf course, mm -hmm. and they would tell us all about what we should expect and uh, mm -hmm. articles of war and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. And, 
Then they really, really wanted us to get in shape, so they really were running up the obstacle course. Oh, okay. I like that. Yeah, I, I did, you, that. did you have to do that every day? or? We did that sometimes two or three times a day. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The and obstacle they, course. And, uh, then uh, they had a, one thing I remember real well, they had a trough like this, built up like this on a certain angle. Mm -hmm. it, it was about, I'd say, 50 or 60 feet long. Oh, wow. Like a trough. Good size, right yeah. And you had to. And you know, it was on an angle like this, and you had to get up there and run through there. Oh! <laughs> I seen, I seen, I seen fellows that couldn't even do that. I bet. So your ankles that had to go on an angle, see. Mm hmm But I, I can do it real well. Wow, that was a challenge that yeah. was no match for you. <laughs> <laughs> I got along pretty good. Yes, sir. Yep, we're glad of it. All right. So after your basic training, then they sent you um, down to Fort Myers, Florida, yeah. and that's where you got your 12 weeks of gunnery training at the Buckingham Army Buckingham Air Base. Air Base yeah. All right, and then after that, you went over to uh, Scottsdale, Illinois. For Scott, Scott Field. Scott Field, Scott Field, yeah. Illinois, yeah. for nine weeks of the radio right. operator training. Then after that, uh, January of 1944, you went to Avon Park, Florida, right. back to Florida, and uh, that's where you learned about your crew uh, and uh, prepared for your overseas Yeah, we, we sat there uh, on the ground. It was, of course, it was warm in Florida. And, and they had a stake up and our car, our number was 46, crew 46. Oh. So, so we had to look all around and see if it was 46. And that, that's pretty soon all the guys come together. Oh, you know, and that yeah. was our crew. Yep, 46. <laughs> and we introduced each other. They was, the three of us in there out from Ohio. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. The, the pilot, he was from Ohio. Mm -hmm. The navigator from Ohio. And, mm -hmm. and, and at that time, uh, and I was, I, as soon as I entered, I was still a radio operator. Mm -hmm. But I told the pilot, I said, you know what? I, I, I don't want to be a radio operator. I'd like to be a tail gunner. Because ah. a guy in, in gunnery school mm -hmm. told me, he said, if you want something really interesting, uh, he said, "Be a tail gunner." So that's what I I wanted. To, I wanted to do that. You wanted interesting. Yeah, but I found out later it was too, a little bit too exciting. <laughs> <laughs> too interesting. Yeah. So I'm but sure. But that's the way I got to be a tail gunner. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he, the, the pilot, of course, he when when the pilot's there, he's a, he's in command of you. See. Yep. And he he done he done that. So I yeah. I, I always give him credit for that because I I really got along good and being a tail gunner and everything. Mm -hmm. Of course, you got to be on alert and keep your head moving like this all the time. All the time. <laughs> yep. yep. I, I can only imagine. So that, that, that's what happened at Avon Park at that time. Yeah. But I'm sure it was a small comfort to have some guys from Ohio yeah, there yeah. with you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Little, little little piece of home yeah. out there with yeah, you. Yeah. The very... co pilot, I can tell you, the co pilot, he was from California. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Mama Dear, he was from Virginia. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the race gunners, he he was from uh, New York. Mm -hmm. see. And then we we had another race gunner that got sick on us. He couldn't. He, he every time we'd fly, why well, he'd get sick. So oh. they, they they transferred it to. Or he they took him out. I don't know what they were done with him. Like air sickness. Yeah, he, he couldn't got take it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yep. uh, we got another guy. All I can remember his name was Charles, and he was from uh, Michigan. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when we went overseas, he never flew a mission with us. I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> right. Well, well. So, I'm sure he made his way somewhere. Yeah. So that's what happened okay. a lot there. Yeah, yeah, a lot there. Um, and after your overseas training, uh, you guys went to Savannah, Georgia. Yeah. And that's where you got your brand new airplane. We got a brand new airplane at Savannah, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And you had roll call at 9 a.m. every day, and you guys spent the, two weeks there. Uh, every every morning you'd have to have roll call. Mm -hmm. It was outside. Okay. And they would notify whether you had a, got your airplane that day. Oh. So we we waited there about two weeks before we got our airplane. Oh, it was two weeks before you got the yeah. plane. Oh, all right. Yeah. And finally we got the airplane and I, I remember they loaded it down with mail and we had seven big bags of mail in there. Oh and all yeah. All our belongings and mm -hmm. of course we bought a few alcohol. I think, well, I think you know, <laughs> that's understandable. <laughs> <laughs> had to do that. <laughs> and, uh, then 
I don't know what all they put in that plane. A lot of stuff, you know, they fly overseas. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember they weighed the airplane there. They had to weigh the, weigh, the, weigh the airplane there. Mm -hmm. They weighed 32 tons at wow. that time. Wow, yep. Of course, that's a small airplane compared to what they got today. Compared to today, you know? yeah, that's right, and, uh, that's right. So then we took off. Uh, we tore off from Savannah, Georgia, mm -hmm. and uh, went going to Bangor, Maine. Okay. And, uh, and then from there, did you head over to Newfoundland? Yeah. From from okay. Maine. Okay. Bangor, and that, Maine was Newfoundland. Yeah, and you were preparing for your flight to Wales. Yeah, right. From, from Newfoundland. Yeah. Yeah. All these places where we land, like Bangor, Maine, and mm -hmm. they, they really treat us nice. And it wasn't Good. regular army. They on the tables like they had big tables. They had. Mm -hmm. uh, they had, they had the covers on them and everything. And, uh, they put had, the linens out and everything. Yeah, put the linens out. They had drawers on them and everything. That's good. And, That's uh, the least they could do. Got the best food. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. But when we left Newfoundland, we was in the air seven hours over the over the Atlantic Ocean. Over the Atlantic Ocean. I, I water still, in every direction. I look, look, nothing but water. Nothing said, but water. This is going to be a long way to swim or something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, All right. So um, once you got over to Wales um, in Britain, uh, the gunners of your crew, that's where you got your advanced gunnery yeah. training, was, was in uh, they, Britain. They sent us to the wars. Did you, did you ever find out? I did look into that. It's an estuary, it? yeah, and I think it's probably called that, maybe because it's shaped like a yeah, wash basin right, or right. something like that. I yeah, did research on, on that. The east side of England. Mm -hmm. Yep, they um, called it the wash. Yep, they sure did. So we we took uh, that's called advanced training there, mm -hmm. and they they had machine guns mounted on the ground. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Sure. They had machine gun mounted on the, on the post on the ground. Mm -hmm. Usually a fighter pod or fighter plane, which I tell you what, the Navy pulled tow targets for us. Oh, and, did they? And I never will forget those planes that come up real low mm -hmm. and, and uh, the, the water would run out of the airplane. I didn't know what was going on at that time, but I talked to one of the pilots mm -hmm. later, one of the Navy pilots. Mm -hmm. And he said, boy, going up there and flying, he said, that was monotonous. Just, he'd just fly around, and we'd shoot at the tow target, and mm -hmm. then he'd fly around and shoot at the tow target. Again. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but he you said, when we come to, like, they, they come to work, that's what they call it, come to work. Oh. And there was waves out there, and they, he, they would take that airplane and skip over the waves. That's really? Oh, I see. <laughs> he said, that's the only fun we had. Right. <laughs> you got to get it where you can, you know? <laughs> My goodness. All right, so. So, so yeah. another thing that I mm -hmm. want to tell you there, they, they have a, on the board, well, like that TV up or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. They had a big, it was about four foot square. They would place airplanes on there. Just, oh. just place them in like a second. Sure. And you were supposed to tell what kind of airplane they were and sure. how many was in that plane. Oh, and wow. You could, you could do it. If you didn't look right at the screen, I call it a screen, but it wasn't that. Mm -hmm. You look up to the top left-hand corner and look off the screen. Just kind of out of the side of your That's eye. right. Yeah, yeah. And you could uh, tell how many planes was in that group and mm -hmm. what kind they were. And it was a lot better. If you still were right at it, you couldn't do it. And if they were friend or foe or yeah, that kind of right. stuff. Yeah, we, yeah. We had, uh, we had German planes up there. And, mm -hmm. and uh, well, in the States here, we... we uh, we had Japanese planes, but after we got over there, we didn't study Japanese planes. Just right, right. We studied the English planes and, of course, American planes mm -hmm. and, and Canadian planes. Right, <laughs> right. Of course, right. I was all English. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you were just in the European theater, yeah, not right. over, over the, Japan. And yeah. we had to, they had German planes in there, too, all exactly. kinds of German planes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, all right, so you and your crew, uh, the B-17 crew, you guys were stationed at Polebrook, England. Right. That, that was your home base, and you were part of the 8th Air Force, the 351st Bomb Group, and the 508th Bomb Squadron. Right. Then you received your rank of Staff Sergeant in September 1944. Right. And you're credited with shooting down two of right. those German fighter planes that we were just talking about, and that was in one mission. One mission. One right. mission in uh, Merz, Merzburg? Merzburg. Merzburg. We, we had bombed Merzburg, Germany. Mm -hmm. It was an oil refinery. Yeah. And uh, 
we had just bombed and I suppose we was about maybe 10 or 15 minutes away from the target mm -hmm. and we got attacked by uh, by this 190. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came in at six o'clock level and his wings, of course he had two 20 millimeters there and, and, and two other, they were six guns firing at us. Wow. And, uh, and I only, and he, he only had two guns firing at him, but that was me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you beat his six with your two. And yeah. Yep, sure did. So, sure did. So anyway, my, my shells got him first. Yep, and, uh, luckily. Yep. So he went, he went, when last I'd seen him, he went down on the wing like this, and my pilot, as soon as he got down in front of the airplane, like this, sort of in front of the airplane, mm -hmm. he bailed out. Yep, okay. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know it for years, but uh, of course Jeff over there found that out he, <laughs> on the internet. He found out uh, that this one that I shot down, well, uh, I must have shot, got him in the arm or something because he, uh, uh, the plane wasn't flyable anymore. I don't know what happened to it. Right. Of course, I, and of course, he when he bailed out, his parachute didn't open. Oh, mm -hmm. and he he fell to his the ground yeah. and killed him. Right, right. And I think maybe he was wounded before. Did he say Jerry or Jeff? Did he say he was wounded? In the elbow. In the elbow. In the elbow. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. and but uh, and he was a, he was a German ace at that time. Yep. And, well, just about that time in, uh, I'd say maybe a few minutes. I don't, I don't, I don't remember how long it took. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, this 190, he blew our ball turret gunner clear out of the airplane. He blew, blew the ball turret clear off. Right. And uh, it had two big holes in the wing, in the right wing, and, and right above me on the tail, there was a big hole about that big around where 20 millimeters, but I didn't know that till we landed. Yeah, just and, so so intense, and I'm sure it was all just, just a blur of just yeah. action in, in the And moment. I'll tell you something, Jeff over there, he's making a model plane with all them holes in it and everything just like it was. How about that, Jeff? We look forward to <laughs> seeing that when it's all and, done. And, and, no, very good. No, no, nobody, I don't even tell you they got one of those down the right, down in, Museum of Dayton? <laughs> no, no, they don't. That'll be exclusive to Champaign yeah, Aviation yeah. Museum. That's uh, right. He's, he's designed it just like that I remember how it was. Wow. And, uh, and of course, uh, we, we, after that, why, uh, oh, okay. The, the 109, he, he actually knew that we didn't have no ball turner. We didn't have no waste gunner either because he got wounded. Right. And, uh, and the bottom of the, the plane, the floor there by the mm -hmm. wall tree, it was all Gone. blown out. Exactly. Yeah. So he was trying to look for your weak spots. Yeah. Work the and weak he, spots. He yeah. knew that. That's mm -hmm. that thing. So he flew out there a little bit formation. I couldn't see him because he was down low. And, Below, right. And, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, so the co pilot says, everybody stay off the airplane but Kimmy and I. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so off the intercom because we, you know, he didn't want to be sure. He wanted to inform me because he could look back and see him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he kind of looked back and had to look down too. Mm -hmm. So pretty soon uh, he, uh, he had his flaps down the way I understood it in order to slow down for us because mm -hmm. we was only running about 140 then. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, so uh, he went and... Uh, uh, the co-pilot yeah, co says, uh, pretty soon he says, watch him, Kempe. He said he's putting his flaps clear down. So he was going to put his flaps clear down mm -hmm. and slow up and, and shoot us completely down. Wow. So mm -hmm. so when the co-pilot kept me informed, and I, uh, another thing that I did, I sat there with my hands on the gun like this. I never moved my head, and that's one of the best things I've ever, ever done because if really? he had seen me move the guns yeah. or... Uh, or move my head, he wouldn't. Have, he wouldn't. Have, he would have left. Right. Right. And uh, so I sat there like this. I'll tell you the reason I did. Mm -hmm. I was scared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Scared, but uh, yeah, tactically yeah, it, yeah. it worked out. And, yep. Yep. And, uh, yeah. So, so, but when he got, yeah, Cobas was watching him. He's coming, he's putting mm -hmm. his flag, so he's going to slow up. Mm -hmm. See, and. Uh, so when he got up there, I, I kept, I moved my eyes. I never moved my head. Right. I just went, 
And as soon as he got up there where I could see him real good and within a 45 degree angle, mm -hmm. that's how far my guns would go. That was the I moment. I just felt like this. That was it. That was the moment. Got him. Well done, sir. And he went yep. down, smoking, and, I, and uh, he kept going down like this. And of course, we were getting, he was getting farther away from us. I expect maybe he got maybe eight or ten miles down there, and I seen him blow up. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Big, big bull of fire and then back black smoke. Yeah, I'll never, I'll it was forget that. a relief to have him off your tail. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Then, yep. then we were we were still over Germany, see, over enemy territory. Right, and, right. So P-51 finally come up there. Oh, mm -hmm. And uh, he escorted us back to the channel. Oh, thank goodness. So, Absolutely. So, so he, he, he sort of protected us, I guess. But I, I didn't see no more fighters at all after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that P-51 coming to escort you back was a, a welcome sight. Mm -hmm. My goodness. So we mentioned that you had flown a 35 combat missions, and you were awarded the Air Medal with right. five Oak Leaf Clusters. Right. So tell us about how the Oak Leaf Clusters work. So you get the Air Medal. You get the, uh, you get the Air Medal, mm -hmm. and then, then uh, you get a cluster every time you get another Air Medal. See, mm -hmm. really, that, that uh, five, that was five air medals, but they don't give you the, the medal, they just give you the cluster to it. Exactly. And then I had five clusters. All, all your medals are that way, even your DFC, and you get a, if you get to so many, I don't know how many it is. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, you get a, if you get like four or five of them, you get a, you get a, if you, if you get, if you get five clusters, you get a silver cluster then, mm -hmm. for just one, oh, for five. okay, okay. You hardly ever see anybody get them. <laughs> sure, yeah, I can imagine yeah. those are a little harder to get. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's the way it worked. And then see, okay. And then you also received the Distinguished Flying Cross right. and uh, several battle stars. I got five battle stars, mm -hmm. and and before I come down here, I wonder, I, I don't know what the battles are. One's mm -hmm. Ardennes. A forest. Mm -hmm. One's the Rhine River, mm -hmm. and you know I don't know. I don't. Know. I don't know. Well, anymore. we don't <laughs> expect you to remember all those anymore. <laughs> so uh, finally, after after all of that, uh, you returned to the United States in February of 1945. Right. Right. And uh, at that time, you received training to become a Link Flight Instrument Trainer. Right. And uh, tell us about the Link Flight Instrument Trainer. Well, the link trainer, why well, it's it's movable. Mm -hmm. I mean, you fly it just like an airplane. Yeah. And uh, if, if you stall it out, it'll go down like this, and you can back it like it. And you're closed in a little box. Right. You're closed, and, it's to help and all you're looking at is instruments. instruments That's what it is. Only. Uh, they're flying on instruments. Flying blind. Uh, instruments uh, only. Yeah. Yep. So. Uh, so that was in San Angelo, Texas. Yeah, I was correct? in San Angelo, Texas. Mm -hmm. right. We've been Tokyo. all over, all yeah. over the United States <laughs> and the world. My goodness. So after uh, you were an instructor for the Link Flight Trainer, uh, you were discharged on September 8th of 1945 right. at the Greenville Air Force Base in Mississippi. No, 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 no. No? Well, please, please correct this. Uh, Tell us about that. I'll correct you on that. Yeah, please do. Please do. <laughs> I, 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 from there, I went to Greenville, Mississippi okay. before I got discharged. Okay. But uh, then down in Greenville, Mississippi, why uh, I got in with a guy, another fella, and we we taxied B-24s up to the hangar oh. to get them pickled. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so when they're pickled, that means they're just going to well, stay that, there for a little bit. They pickled them because they they didn't want them. They, they, they would take the spark plugs out and... and Fix them so they wouldn't, you know, what they thought, they thought they were going to use them more in Japan, mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. And then they were flying them back from Europe, and they, they pickle eight a day, and mm -hmm. we had to actually eat a day up there. And just like a pickle, it's to preserve the airplane. It's just like pickling. Just in pickling a cucumber to preserve keep, it. Keep them in shape. That's right, that's right, so you can use them later. So they, then from there, why, mm -hmm. went to Camp Atterbury, Indiana. Indiana, that's right. So then you came back home to Port Jefferson, right? And uh, you went to work as a machinist mm -hmm. at the Monarch Tool uh, Machine and Tool Company yeah. for six or seven years. But you were also a machinist before the war. Oh yeah. I, also at Monarch, or was it at a, no, another company? No, it was uh, 
Sydney Machine and Tool Company. Ah. It was a, it was a, they made, they, they built lathes and then they built lathes there, but, but the Sydney Machine and Tool Company had a lot better lathes than the Monarch. Did they? they? <laughs> yeah, a lot better. Yeah. I, I'll tell you what made them better too. In the Monarch, in the gearbox, they just used straight gears. Mm -hmm. But over in the Sydney Machine and Tool Company, they used herringbone gears. Oh. They, they took care of the in play. Mm -hmm. that, was, that made them better. Interesting. Yeah. I, well, I imagine didn't, so. I didn't get to work there too long because they drafted me in the Air Force. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, it's good you were able to, you know, pick that profession back up uh, afterwards. So in 1951, uh, you met your soon to be wife. You met her in Mel Fountain. Right. And uh, what was her name? Eileen. 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 Uh, 1954, um, you moved from Port Jefferson to Bell Fountain right. with Eileen, and then you guys lived there happily together for 63 years. Right. Absolutely. She passed away, see, it's been about four years Four ago, years yeah. ago, yeah. So I live by myself now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I'm trying to keep the house clean. Yeah, <laughs> it's job, <dumb>, isn't it? <laughs> That's one of the biggest jobs there is. It is, you know. <laughs> All this war stuff, my goodness, keeping the house clean. I'm just kidding, just kidding. Um, so, Art, we appreciate you sharing your biography with us. Um, I do have a, a couple more questions. Okay. We, can, we can shift back to uh, your military experiences. Um, so, uh, of course, you were drafted into the Army Air Force. So why did you choose to stay with the Air Force and not go into the Navy or the infantry or, or anything like that? What was it about the air? That attracted you? Well, I can't hardly answer that in the way, but uh, uh, I tell you what I what I did do when I worked uh, Fort Hayes. I tried to. I told them I went in the Marine Air Force, mm -hmm. and uh, and they said uh, we can't give you the Marine Air Force and give you the Navy. But at that time, mm. the Navy and the, and the Marines were some the same outfit. Were they? Yeah. They are. The Marines are part of the Navy. I'm, I don't think many folks uh, out in the world know that. And, and, uh, so then, then the, the guy, the, the, I, I was sitting there and he was interviewing me like we are here. See, mm -hmm. he tell me, I, he said, "I tell you what, I can do. I, I can give you the Army Air Force." Oh. Uh -huh. I said, well, "That sounds good to me." So yeah. And, and, then I never really had any desire to fly at that time. Mm -hmm. and, and then uh, after I went to Florida then, my, they, they told me I was going to fly on B-17s. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then uh, my mom wrote me a letter. I, I told her, she said, whatever you do in there, don't you fly. <laughs> <laughs> Moms, I know how they yeah, are about yeah. you getting in those airplanes. Same here. <laughs> so I, I didn't pay much attention to that. Really. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know when you said you wanted interesting, so yeah. you got it. Got <laughs> you got it. it. <laughs> so uh, you mentioned uh, Kempe. Remember, uh, you were talking about your experience and that your pilot was saying, just me and Kempe. How did you get that nickname Kempe? Well, the, the first guy that was coming with my... Uh, Co-pilot there, he called me Kempy back then. Mm -hmm. But I'll show you what I got a thing here. Yeah. I think I brought that down in there. I think I did. Oh, I had a thing there to show you too. Yeah. I, they, they got me all written up in that book there. Dude, that's good. Right here, we got a uh, copy of the Polbrook Post. The 351st Bomb Group Association of the 8th Air Force. The 41st Reunion. Hey, go over this up. Let's see, I'll show you. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Right here. By Jeff Duffy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll get this out here. Stop carrying it. There we go. See there? See, do you know her? That's uh, Christine's daughter. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. She, she was 14 years old. She got it right there. See? Yes. She, she, she wrote a wonderful piece. She's the one to call me Kempy. That's where, that's where I really got the name. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she, That's wonderful. Uh, did you ever read this? I have, yep. 
It's a very good story. She did she, a wonderful she job. She done a good job. Yes, she did. 13 years old. Amazing. She, very bright girl. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. She she was really nice and she's smart too. Yes. Yep. We I, need I've seen her for a long time. Well. I'm sure she's still around <laughs> doing well. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to follow up with her one of these days. Yeah. Yep. So uh, why did they train you as a radio operator and a gunner? Why did you need to know how to do both things? Well, because uh, when, when a, a radio operator on an airplane, on a B-17, maybe other airplanes too, mm -hmm. I don't know. And he also had to be a gunner mm -hmm. on, on account of see, the uh, original, the B-17 had a gun in the radio room. In the radio room. But they took it out. They took it out when we could come back. Did they? Yeah. Because he only had a look up like this, and the, the, the plane was going 300 miles an hour over the top. All right, it's he gone. He wouldn't have time no. to shoot. Uh, no. Those. So they took the they took the gun out. Uh, Just because of the extra weight, or no, no. Well, it helped. They yeah. helped the mm -hmm. weight and everything, but uh, but they took it out because they, they couldn't use it. That it was that wasn't usable. Yep, that makes and, sense. And so he had. That, that's the reason he, he took training to be a gunner that way, but then later on, he was supposed to, if somebody got wounded, uh, one of the other gunners got wounded, he, had, he was supposed could to jump in uh, and take in. over. Yep, 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 that's why. So how long were you based at Polbrook in England? I was based at Polbrook in nine months. Nine months. So of the 35 missions that you flew, how many months did it take to complete all of those? Well, it took the nine months. The nine months? <laughs> okay. Yeah, all, that was I, all in Polk. When I finished my last mission, mm -hmm. uh, about three days later, that they shipped me out. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My goodness. So you mentioned the one mission, you know, with, with the German aces and um, a couple of the milk missions. Were the majority of your missions stressful, or were they... Milk missions, 50-50, or? No, i tell you what, if we call them milk missions, or milk, uh, milk run. Milk run, mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, they all were, were, were tough. Yep. And i tell you what, if you talk to any other gunner or any other guy on a crew, he was scared. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody was. Yep. I, I like that, oh, I wasn't scared, I wasn't scared, but that's it. Yeah. <laughs> they're not that. human if they weren't scared. Yeah, they're, they're yep. scared. Oh yeah, rightfully and so. I tell you, one of the one of the scariest things is is taking off in the more in the like when you take off. Really? Because you got a full gas load on B seventeen would hold twenty eight hundred and fifty gallons of gas. Oh wow! And then you had the four tons of bombs. Mm -hmm. Then you had all your guns and sure. everything. And uh, I I don't know uh, how much they weigh. They claim. One time a, a B-17 was 84,000 pounds. Wow. So, so you, wow. So you could ride that with two. Getting that in the air. Yeah. You can yeah. only That's imagine how many tons they were. the power of those engines mm -hmm. to lift that aircraft yeah. and all of that and supply. But usually when you, you got off the ground, like, you, you felt pretty good. Yeah. Because you, we're in the air. Yeah, we're in the air. <laughs> On you know, our way. the speed was picking up then, too. Yeah, yeah. Got to yeah, gotta keep your airspeed up. <laughs> got to keep your airspeed up. Are you a pilot? Or are you no, not? I'm not, but I, I might be one of these days. I'd like to be. Okay. <laughs> we'll see Scott Dover. Yeah, I know. You know him? You know him? I, uh, I've only met him once, yeah. <laughs> now, so, he, he took me up in a P-51. That was something, ago. I bet. <laughs> yeah. My word. Yeah. He comes up here once in a while. He does. Mm -hmm. He sure does. Yep, got to catch him every time we can. Just like you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's up here with a T-28, and I, I actually flew the T-28. Did you? Yeah. How was that? Just just felt like flying a little light plane when it was heavier. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah, you know, he let me fly that. Wow. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad of that. But I well, I did, uh, on the P-51, I did fly it from the rear seat a little bit, but, but uh, oh. I didn't fly it very much. Wow. See, they, they took some of the radio equipment out of the P-51s. Mm -hmm. Of course, nowadays they got modern radio equipment. Sure, sure. Little small packages. Sure. So uh, they had a little seat in the back end of that P-51. He'd, he'd always be up there with it again. Oh, and, yeah. And, uh, and then he got a rudder back there, and you're, 
your stick and everything. Uh -huh. you, you can fly it. Yeah. <laughs> but on the T-28, I flew it from the front seat. <laughs> it was a tandem job. Wow. It, it was really nice. That was something. Oh, yeah. So before you went into the war, had you flown an aircraft before? Or no. That was, was, wow. The wow. first airplane ride I ever took was in, when I was in gunnery school. It was on an AT-6. Mm -hmm. And we were shooting, a B-26 would pull a tow target mm -hmm. uh, past, past the AT-6, and we would shoot at the tow target. Oh, yeah. And we had different color shells. That on the ends, they were different color, and that's the way they graded you. That's how they could tell who was hitting and who was missing. Yep. I found out later to, 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 to get the black color because a lot of the other shells, they, they looked like black, so you got a better color. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty smart. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so then the, this pilot in that AT-6, that was in, that down there in Florida at uh, gunnery, at, uh, gunnery school. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, he told me that he said if you, you shoot your shell, or shoot your guns or shell. They, they give you so many shells. I forget what it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, shoot them all up. And he said we'll go out over to Gulf of Mexico and fly everything. Yeah. So I did. I turned. And we had to sit backwards because we were shooting out of the canopy. See. Yeah. And I, I looked back. And I gave him this ear signal. Man, he peeled off like this. <laughs> <laughs> And we went out over to go to Mexico, and he turned that thing upside down, all kind of. You know what? I couldn't tell the sky from the water. <laughs> yeah, it's all blue. Yeah. It's all blue. It's all right. blue. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, was your most heart-pounding mission the uh, one with the German aces on your tail? Would you say that was your most heart-pounding mission? I'd say that was one of the worst missions. One of the worst we ones. Got, and we got shot up. I think worse than what we did on the third mission. Too. Oh. The third mission was nothing but flying. Yeah, coming through. And, yep. uh, but, uh, but on the 11th mission, that's when we got attacked by fighter thing. Mm -hmm. and they, they really shot us up with a lot of, a lot of little holes. And, mm -hmm. and, and I'm lucky to be alive because those shells, they, they only went under me about 18 inches, something wow. like that. Wow. Well, whatever the bolt torch sticks out in the plane when they're flying level, that's how close they come to me. So I didn't know it at the time. No. So. Wow. What what yeah. what an experience. But then wow. after we landed, then so I really got scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine so. So you've explained all these experiences that were heart pounding and scary. Did you ever have any fun while you were over there? Oh, yeah. You ever have any opportunities? We had fun, but I don't dare to tell. No, no, we, we're not going to ask you to tell. We just want to know that you did have some good times while you were no, over we there. No, we did. Mm -hmm. And I uh, can tell you another thing we did. <laughs> well, uh, they, they would bring girls in by the bus load. Oh, yeah. For the <laughs> for dancing. And nice, like yes, that. yes. <clears throat> Then at one time they brought some girls in that they were going to have a dance in school and I signed up for it. Oh yeah. And I did. I I went to that thing and I never danced with one girl. No. I, I was afraid of them. I, oh, <laughs> bless your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I didn't do that no more. Yeah. And let's see what else we. Well, the engineer and I one time we we were pretty good buddies and and. Uh, he was like me. I didn't drink. I didn't smoke or anything mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. Probably didn't even swear. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and he was that way too. He was thirty years old, and he and he was married. And, uh, so he was a little older compared to he a was lot older of the guys. Than, yeah, I yeah. was only twenty. And he was, he was 30. thirty. Yeah. And, uh, so we went to Edinburgh, Scotland, one time together. Wow. We went up there to see this. Sites, you know. Oh yeah, like, uh, the castles and we, the countryside. We up there. Yeah. See, we had a week off. We probably spent about four or five days up there. I, I can't remember. Then one other time, boy, we had time off, and we went to London. Oh wow! And uh, and we went to London, and boy, we knew more and got down there to London, and. Uh, and they run us in an air raid shelter, three stories down. Really? In, in the ground. 
So were, were you under attack and they just wanted to get you guys there, safe? There, or? Buzz bombs were coming oh. over. They were coming over. They didn't know where they were going to land. So right, they, right. So they kept us down there and we were down there the whole night, the mm -hmm. first night we were there. Mm -hmm. so his name was Roy. I said, Royce, mm -hmm. we better get out of here because we're, we're not going to be able to see London. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Didn't expect that. Wow, no, you guys no. were there to just see some sights, and then all of a sudden you're getting in the shelter. Buzz bombs are coming. That's right. That's right. During the war, you just you didn't, see you didn't know when it was coming. Right. Yep. So we went back to Birmingham, and we stayed there a couple of days, and then finally went back to base. And, mm -hmm. and I, I think I wanted to really see London better, but I never did. Well, you know, <laughs> circumstances. Yeah. So, um, did you guys have to have a, a pass to go on to the big cities, or like a weekend pass, or did they just let you go whenever you wanted? Well, or when you went, when you had three days or more off, you had to have a pass. Okay. Yeah, because you had to have a pass to show the MPs were. Ah. Mm -hmm. But on the on the base itself, like we we could go into Peterborough, where it was for about 14 miles. We didn't have to have a pass. We could just walk to beat any time we wanted to. Mm -hmm. Didn't have to have a pass. Not for there, mm -hmm. yeah. But we, we also had to know when we were going to fly to. Right, right. So you got to be there. We, we would be in, <clears throat> into uh, the town there and uh, Petersburg. And at night, if we didn't want to go back to base, we'd they'd get on the phone, call off the base, say, is Charlie in? And then the, uh, or, you know, is Charlie in? And they'd say, yes, he's in. That meant the mission was on, see? Oh, okay. Be back. Right. They'd say, hey, Charlie wasn't in. Well, you didn't have to no mission, back. yeah. And we'd stay all night then. And got then. it, <laughs> got it. Yeah, that makes sense. You couldn't, yeah. if anyone was listening, you that's know, you right. couldn't just uh, say these things, right? So that's what, that's what you're doing. Yeah, so. exactly. Wow. Uh, so, did you lose any of the, your close friends from Colebrook during any of the missions? Oh yeah, a lot. Yeah. A lot. Not the one just in my crew. We didn't hardly know anybody in the other crew. Real, right, right. Because most of them, on the barracks, why you'd see maybe when you come back from mission, you'd see six or seven beds in there. Empty. It was all empty. Yeah. Like, what happened to them guys? Oh, they got shot down yeah. today. You know, just. Didn't worry about it. Yeah. If you worried about it, you'd go nuts. Then that'd get in, in your mind and yeah. it would affect you. And, so, and uh, so we, uh, I, I, there's a few guys that I can remember, but mm -hmm. they, they wouldn't just put us. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And I'm sure one guy, can I tell you a little story? Please do, yes. One guy's name was Fritz in there. Yeah. He, I don't know what crew he was on, but he came in here after we did. Mm -hmm. He was an engineer and Every, every moment he got, he, he laid in his butt and went to sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was getting rest. Went to sleep all the time. Yeah. And <clears throat> so we had a wooden box there. A lot of guys got these uh, 20 millimeters and, and uh, 50 millimeters and mm -hmm. 30 millimeters and 30 caliber. Sure. And they would, uh, they would uh, take the powder out of them, see, and make, make ends for picture print it and they oh. polish them maybe they look nice. Oh so interesting. I never made one but yeah. they probably guys did. Interesting. And but the powder they took it put that in a box. So one day a guy got they had a whole box of just powder. Just powder, yeah. So one day <laughs> one guy got said, We ought to fix that guy down there and sleeps all the time. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. So what happened? So they when everybody knew about it went outside <laughs> out of the barracks. Yeah. And <laughs> And the barracks had an ammonium floor in it too. It wasn't just a wood floor. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. So we went outside. One guy, he went and took that gunpowder and sprinkled a little spot, clear down like this, and went clear around his bed like this. <gasps> he couldn't get around on the head. It was the head of the back. Up against the wall, wall yeah. Just went around each side. So the guy out, we all <laughs> waited and waited. Pretty soon, one of the guys, he lit that on the yeah. outside. So yeah. Yeah. Well, went, <laughs> Like that real fast, <laughs> and, and it went around, turned around his bed. Yeah, and it was hot. Oh uh, yeah, and he, he really come out of there. <laughs> that was one of the fun. Oh things. rascals! Yeah, another another fun yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh my word. <laughs> so after your thirty fifth mission, how did you feel? 
Did you know you that was it, or? I really felt relieved. Yeah. I felt relieved. Mm -hmm. and another thing that I didn't tell you, uh, they asked me if I wanted to fly back from overseas. I said no. No. Oh. Because I flew overseas. Yeah. Uh, I said I want to. I want to be on the ship. Mm -hmm. That time I wanted to be on the ship because I wanted to see how it was. Yeah. So, and they put me on the ship. So I, I got to come back on the ship. We mm -hmm. were on the on the. On an airplane, it was probably only took me two days. Mm -hmm. But on a ship, it took me quite a bit longer. Days. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I enjoyed every bit of it because I got in with a with one of the. It was a Coast Guard ship, and uh, I got in with one of the guys that knew all about the engine. Uh, I don't know what they called me. And he took me down and turned down the bottom, showed me all the engines, showed me the big shafts. Oh and yeah, I, I still remember that. Those are really impressive. Yeah, really yeah. Impressive. yeah. It was an oil burner, and it was a big pipe, it was about that big around the feet and the engines. Mm -hmm. and, and they were, some of them were plastic, I suppose plastic, but you could see through the oil, and the oil, it was really thrown fast to there for those oh, engines wow. must use the lot of Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. So, so what kind of ship was it that you came back on? The ship I came back on was a hospital ship. Oh. And it was Coast Guard hospital. Oh, okay, okay, Coast Guard, yep. And the, and it was uh, a thousand you wounded guys. That was after Normandy. You know? mm -hmm. And there was a thousand guys on there that was wounded. Mm -hmm. And it was only uh, no, it was if I remember there was six thousand on there wounded. And there was a thousand of us guys on there that wounded. That weren't wounded. Uh, yeah. Through me, most yeah. of all through me. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Some, even some of the officers, some of the enlisted men said they told us we're going to have to do some work on the ship. And everybody said, no, we're not going to do a bit of work. We're going to take it easy. Mm -hmm. But you know what? After they seen those guys laying in their beds, yep. some of them didn't have no arms on them, no legs. Right. And, uh, and so they, uh, everybody, uh, that, they held, went together and everybody had done their job. And yeah. they had, some of the officers even were serving them guys food. Oh, yeah. So, Just yeah. Pu pull together and everyone well, helped them. My each job other. was uh, I took the elevator down, mm -hmm. uh, down in the, I call it the hole down there. I think it, it must have been about two mm -hmm. stories down or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And we'd get the food out for the next day meal. Yeah. And, uh, Very important job. So, <laughs> so we, we uh, I only took us about, oh, I'd say maybe. Three hours, something like that. And then we had the rest of the time. Well, we still had to be there when we were doing right. Duty, but we, so then what we do? <laughs> this is another fun thing. Yeah. <laughs> we would get potatoes. Yeah. And uh, get, 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 try to get a really a round potato. Okay. Then <laughs> then we get on one side of the ship where the ship was going like this all the time. Mm -hmm. We'd lay them potatoes up there in the road. And when you chip it, oh, then the potatoes would roll. <laughs> <laughs> the potato roll. Yeah, the potato roll. And You're racing them I and stuff. We, I think we spent a little money. We yeah, money. <laughs> I imagine money. so. <laughs> that, that was one of the You get by how you can. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing they did that I can remember real well, they made ice cream on there. But we didn't make it, but mm -hmm. we were, uh, they made it in there. On the day shift, mm -hmm. we was on the night shift, and, uh, and uh, they, we got into one of them where our hands about that big around so hot to get on it, maybe a couple of gallons of ice cream or whatever. Mm -hmm. And one time we you remember them, what we flavor it was? Up, we said, man, we better eat that. We don't want them to see. We want it empty, you know. Mm -hmm. So we just get our hands like that's right. Uh, <laughs> about, about three or four guys like that. We used to open uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember what flavor it was? Yeah. I think it was vanilla. Vanilla, yeah, classic vanilla. Was. Yep, can't go wrong there. <laughs> I can imagine you guys with your yeah, balls and the ice down cream. Down here, we <laughs> Oh, bless but your it was hearts. good. Yes, it was. <laughs> Another thing that I remember down in the hole, they had all kind of whiskey and stuff like that. But the enlisted men didn't get that. That was just for the officers. officers. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's but not we fair. We, we weren't able to get into that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you know.
Luckily, you weren't much of a drinker anyway, no, right? Yeah. Yeah. You take the ice cream over the, the booze. <laughs> but I, they, on the ship, now they had real good, uh, good meals on the ship. It was, it good. Was good. Yep. Good, very good. So, so once you got back to the United States, how did you go on the path to recovery after all of the stress and, and all the things that you experienced? How did you deal with that when you got home? Well, I, uh, I can, what I did, I went home and uh, I wasn't satisfied. We, we was on the go all the time. Mm -hmm. They kept you on the go. But keep your mind on the pilot did. Yeah. So I would, it, it was a little service station about two blocks from home. Mm -hmm. I'd go up there, I, of course I knew the people, and I'd, I'd go up there and stay maybe 15 or 20 minutes. I wouldn't be satisfied. I'd come mm -hmm. back home. Mm -hmm. And I'd been there all day long like wow. that for almost two weeks. Wow. Until yeah. I settled down. Yeah. Just had so all that energy. Yeah. 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 I can but imagine. I wasn't used to going setting somewhere. No. You know. No, you hadn't done that for quite some time. We were yeah. on the go all the time. All the time. Yeah, that's definitely a change even, of pace. Even when we were at work flying missions, we had to go to school. Right. Always something yeah. to do. Yeah. Mm hmm I can imagine that was a change of pace when you got home. Yeah, yeah. Well, Art, those those are all of my questions. Do you have anything else that you would well, like I to share to with you. us? Uh, I don't know what you have to I got some things here I want to show you. Oh, here, here's one of the pictures, the guy's crew. That I, oh. Uh, and I, I feel that this here was a pilot, co-pilot, and... Uh, this the bombardier and then the navigator. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Here I'll this show this. Here, I, I, I get in contact with his. Uh, uh, let's see, nephew. He's oh. got a nephew lives in uh, Virginia. Oh yeah. And we talked about him. He he passed away a couple of years ago. Yeah. Well, that's nice. He, you still have contact a, with the family. He, he was a lieutenant colonel when he when he got out of the air force. Was he? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So. Here I'll show the camera here. This is the photo we were just looking at here. You can see that. I got some other things I might want to show you here. Absolutely. There's some original things that I, where I got to, to see what that means. Well, that's the one where I got the air medal. Oh, it's official. Yep. Designed by the generals. Mm -hmm. For exceptionally meritorious achievement while participating in sustained bomber combat operations over enemy occupied continental Europe. The courage, coolness, and skill displayed by these officers and enlisted men upon these occasions reflect great credit upon themselves and the armed forces of the United States. I should say so. That one looks like. Did you ever see these, Jeff? Oh, yeah. I don't remember. There's one where I got the Oak Leaf Cluster. And wow. Here's one here where it's just the word. It's got one that says tail gunner. Tail gunner, yep, of B-17 airplane yeah. on a number of combat bombardment missions over Germany and German-occupied countries from the 21st of June, 1944 the 11th of December, 1944. These here are the old, old big touches here. Wow. I, got, I wanted to show you the one where That's I got the I think I got that Oh, here. please. Well, there's some <laughs> oh yeah. There's a there's a pic there's a picture of the guy that when you always got sick. Oh, the air sick fellow. There, there's the guy when Walter got killed. Yeah. And there's me. There's that, that's in Florida before we went overseas. Okay. There's one of my pictures. One of crew forty six. That's when <laughs> I got. And, uh, so handsome, Art. <laughs> let's see what the uh, transfer was that. I'm from uh, Bangor, Maine, I believe. 
to say on this? Oh, the May the 24th. Uh -huh. Yeah, it says Maine right here. Dow Field, Dow, Dow. Maine. Mm -hmm. See the pictures here. Here's, here's a write up ahead in the Sydney paper about me. Oh, yeah. I, I was wondering if they wrote about you in the paper. Yeah. No doubt they did. On more than one occasion, I'm sure. I know. It's, it's back in the, the States. Back, oh, that's, that's when back you were back. States, yeah. Yep, that's when you came home. There's, there's a picture of me, and there's a picture of where our barracks was over there. There's my, on my bicycle. On your bicycle. Yeah. There I'm sitting in the tail of a B-17 there. Oh, and that's over Florida? Yeah, over Florida. And this was in England? That's in England. This that's, here's in England. I was going to say, that's, it looks cold. There, there was our barracks right back here. Yeah. See this bomb right here? I do. Where took that picture. Now this here was the headquarters here. Oh. And they all had this great big bomb there. And yep. Everybody went up there to get a picture taken. I bet. That. I bet you they so did. So took that picture of me, they didn't get it lined up right. No. <laughs> So then did you have to take a picture of the guy who then took a picture of you, like take turns in front of the bomb? <laughs> you often see Art here on his bike and with the bomb. Do you remember what kind of bike that was, Art? No, I don't. That's all right. It was a good bike. I like riding bikes too. I guess he's old. Just clippings. There, there's the clipping. It was in the Stars and Stripes. Oh, uh huh. And the uh, first mission. First mission. Yeah. Wow. Wow. They, they put that in the Stars and Stripes. The factories were damaged. Yep. yep. Very good. <clears throat> and here's a here's a right up the head about the about, about when the Merzberg was on the eleventh. The eleventh. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. The Nazi oil refinery. Yeah. Yep, yep. I, here's a special target, Munich. And uh, what I remember, it was an engine where they built engines and they were building for the, the first jet that they had, for the ME 262. Really? Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. How about that? They, they, that was in the sixth, sixth mission. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, there were just some others there. Wow, 20th mission. Bombers hit rail key. Munich, raid secrets. Wow, great headline. Here's one on my 13th mission. And I didn't oh, worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky 13. Yeah. So was there anxiety before the 13th mission? Just never because worried it was, about it. Never, never worried never about the number. Yep. I thought I had it in here about before I got the DFC, but I don't see it. These here's all the good clusters here. Mm -hmm. I might have it somewhere. It's around here somewhere, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. I I got I I probably didn't put it in here. Mm -hmm. I got a little suitcase I got to keep home, keep all my military stuff. Oh, out. very good. That's wonderful that you keep it all. Besides what I got out here. Yeah, in your <laughs> wonderful case. Yeah. Yes. Well, Art, we thank you so much for your time today and for sharing your experiences with us. And I'm glad to do it. Most of all, thank you for your service. Thank you very much. I appreciate yes, it. You've you done a real good job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Art. Well, I appreciate that very, very much. It was my pleasure and a distinct honor to talk with you today. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Well, everybody, thank you for watching. This concludes our uh, live stream with Art Kemp today. We appreciate you watching, and we'll see you at the Champaign Aviation Museum next time.